Some errors have been found in the signatures collected for three of the state's top Republican candidates to get on the ballot, according to a new legislative audit within the last hour. Yeah, but that report does not explicitly say that Governor Spencer Cox, Attorney General candidate Derek Brown, and Senate candidate John Curtis failed to qualify for the ballot. Here to break things down for us, new specialist Lindsay Ayers. Lindsay, what'd you learn? Yeah, Mike and Dini. well, this is all over how we verify signatures for these candidates to get on the ballot. And what the audit did was look at a 1,000 signatures for each candidate, and it came up with an error rate. Essentially, signature, some signatures should have counted when they didn't, and other signatures that didn't count when they should have. Well, if you applied that error rate to the 28,000 signatures these three candidates had to gather, uh, then it showed that it was statistically possible for these candidates to possibly be short some candidates. But the audit was very clear that when Davis County was reviewing these signatures, each Cox, Brown and Curtis followed the rules and qualified for the ballot based on what they were told and their requirements at the time. Now, why did this happen? Well, the audit highlighted that the subjectivity of signature verification is present, that when election workers go to look at a signature, human error can cause a signature to be counted or rejected when it shouldn't be. Now, the report also notes that each Cox, Brown and Curtis Curtis would have still had time to gather more signatures, but weren't allowed to because they were told they met the threshold. First of all, they didn't find any signatures that didn't exist. Everybody who they reviewed in these packets was an actual um, person. There was an actual signature there. Um, they did not find private voters who were made up or had invalid signatures. They didn't find any fraudulent signatures that were accepted. Um, they didn't um, find that elected officials verified their own signatures. Now, all of those rumors that the state, election, uh, state director of elections, Ryan Kelly, says have been out there online. Now, this audit was called for by these three candidates after repeated claims by write-in candidate for governor Phil Lyman that specifically Governor Cox's signatures weren't legitimate. Now, a spokesperson for the Cox campaign, Matt Lusty, says in part that the governor and lieutenant governor respect the effort of the legislative auditors here and their recognition that the Cox campaign fully complied with the law. They also say they're especially supportive of the proposed change that would allow candidates to continue submitting signatures even after they reach the threshold, a process not currently allowed in Utah election law. Now, this report highlighted a host of changes and potential laws that could change to make the signature verification process more robust. We've got the full report and outline all of those recommendations for you right now at KSLTV.com. Reporting live at the state capitol for KSL 5 News, I'm Lindsay Ertz. Back to you.